Google Forms often gets overlooked as an ed tech tool, but the variations of assignments, forms, and activities it can create are pretty awesome. So today we're exploring 10 ways you can use Google Forms in the classroom. And you better believe it's way more than just survey types. So let's dive in. So sometimes when I suggest Google Forms to a teacher to try in the classroom, I don't get a very excited response. And maybe it's because it's kind of lackluster and pretty simple. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles of excitement, but believe me when I say it really is a power packed tool to utilize, even if it doesn't look the fanciest and it's free. So there's that. So to show you its place that it has in the classroom, I'm going to share with you 10 different ways to use it. Okay, so the first way is a survey. We'll just get this one out of the way. Google Forms was first created to create surveys and collect responses. So it's probably the most common way that Google Forms is used. And just because it's not super exciting, it still is a really good tool to do a survey with. So you can send out surveys for various reasons throughout the school year, like a parent survey, a demographic survey, a consent form, you could be collecting contact information, or a survey to collect opinions on a certain topic. And if you want to make your survey anonymous, just don't collect their name and don't collect their email. You will find using Google Forms for its original purpose of a survey is super easy and it organizes your data into charts and graphs or just by spreadsheet. So yes, the number one way to use Google Forms is a survey, but the other nine ways are not a survey. So let's dive into the rest. Number two, formative assessment. You can use Google Forms to create an easy, quick, formative assessment. So if you want a quick pulse on your students learning, you can create a reusable formative assessment form for your students to complete. So you can create multiple formative assessments to have ready to send out to your students quickly at the end of the lesson, or just have one form that has say one to three blank questions, and then you ask the question orally in class. You can either share this link during class or have them pre-scheduled out in your learning management system to send out towards the end of class. And a pro tip with this one, to make your formative assessments really flexible for all of your classes, make sure to have the first question be their name and the second question to be a drop down of what class they are in. This way, when you're looking at your spreadsheet of answers, you can easily see which class the answers came from and have your data of answers organized really well in a spreadsheet. So what this means is you can use the same Google form for every class again and again and again. There is no need to have a separate formative assessment form for every single class. You can use the same one. Number three is a common way educators use Google forms and it's an exit ticket. This can simply be a form with a three, two, one questioning or it can be an exit ticket of just simply name one thing you learned today. Remember, you can use the same form for every one of your classes. For the three, two, one questioning, this could be question number one would be, tell me three new words or ideas about the topic that you learned today. Then question two would be, tell me two ways that you could use this information in your life. And question three would be, Tell me one question that you still have about this topic. So that's an example of a three, two, one exit ticket questioning. And a pro tip on this one, you can use the same exit ticket for the end of each class and have it linked in your learning management system as exit ticket. Since it's the same link every day, you can post it once and just instruct your students to complete their exit ticket for the day. It can become part of the classroom culture that at the end of the day, we click on the exit ticket and complete those quick questions for the day. But you only need to link it up once, assign it once, and create it once. You'll just have the link there sitting inside of their classwork. And they'll know when you say, complete your exit ticket, what you're talking about and where to find it each day. On to number four. This is using Google Forms as a quiz or a test. I love to use Google Forms for a quiz or a test. You can do a variety of question types and if you want it to auto grade it for you, it will. 
To turn on the auto grading in Google Forms, click on your gear settings, then turn on make this a quiz. Once that's turned on, you can add point values and correct answers to each question. This feature is the best for multiple choice questions because there is only one exact answer, but it can also auto grade fill in the blank questions if the student spells the answers correctly. A pro tip with this one, when grading the fill in the blank questions manually like short answer or paragraph questions, click on the responses tab, then click organize by question and you will see each question individually. From there, you can grade each question quickly by putting in the point value earned, or clicking the red X for no points, or clicking the green check mark for full points. Google Forms will automatically enter the correct amount of points for full points based on the amount of points that you selected each question is worth. Grading this way speeds up grading those manual questions when we use Google Forms. Number five on our list is a picture assignment, and they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And this is where we get to hear our students' words of what they think is going on in the picture. And this is really a powerful way to learn and also great for our teachers to know in paragraph form versus multiple choice what our students actually think about what's happening in the picture. So I think of the Boston Tea Party and I think of a picture where they're dumping the tea uh, into the harbor. And having a student explain what is happening in that picture is a lot more valuable to a teacher than just a multiple choice question. So pictures are a really great way for students uh, to be able to tell what they know, and then the teacher is able to really understand what they're thinking and see if they understand the material. So using Google Forms, you just simply put a picture in as the question, and your question can just say, describe what is happening in this picture. And then you just put a paragraph response blank for them to answer. And this assignment could just be one picture and they just have to explain in detail what's happening. Or it could be included in on a test where you have multiple choice questions, fill in the blank questions, and then you have a picture question. It can be done either way. Picture assignments are also really useful to use when it's faster to take a picture of your textbook or a screenshot example than it is to recreate a picture or rewrite the text from say the textbook or from your screen. When you can just use the picture as a question, that saves you a lot of time in typing. So if that makes sense, it maybe isn't a historical picture that you are having your students explain or tell us the relevance. It could simply be a screenshot of words that you just didn't have to retype or a graph or chart from the book that you don't need to take time to recreate. So there's kind of a pro tip on this one. Number six is a sign up sheet. We are always using sign up sheets in education. We're signing up for who's bringing what for class parties, volunteer for work events, parent teacher conferences, and the list goes on for the reason that we need a sign up sheet. Google Forms makes it easy to create and reuse sign up sheets to get the data quickly, and the form responders do not need a Google account to complete the form. They just need the link. So, a pro tip with this one you can add the Choice Eliminator add on to your Google Form. So, as options are selected or signed up for, the choice is no longer an option for the next person. So, if you're using a form to do parent teacher conference times, once that time is selected, then the next parent that comes onto the form, they won't see that six o'clock time as an option because the parent before them selected it. So that's a really nice add-on to use if you're going to use Google Forms as a sign-up sheet. And let's even take this idea of using Google Forms as a sign-up sheet one step further. Looking at your response sheet that Google creates for us in Google Sheets, you want to use a sort feature, so then you can easily organize your data. Let's say for parent-teacher conferences, you want to know what your schedule looks like. So you can have it sort in chronological order based on the responses that were collected. Because they'll all just come in based on the time that the respondent submitted the form. But if you want it to give you your schedule for the night in chronological order, use the sort feature to make that happen. 
We're moving on to number seven, a check-in form. Google Forms is great for check-in forms because the answer spreadsheet Google Forms will create timestamps all the responses. An example of where this type of form could be used would be in a study hall class where students need to check in and out of study hall to use the restroom, go take a test, go get a book from the library, wherever they need to go, they would just check out on the form. It's really simple for them to complete. It also creates a data document with timestamps of when the student left the classroom and then you would have them check back in when they re-entered the classroom. So all of that is documented if you need to refer to those times later. Another example of this is checking out classroom materials or let's say USB drives that you have and you want to keep track of who has what, who has borrowed what, right? You can use a Google Form to have students check out devices or adapters, USB drives. Maybe you have a classroom library and you want them to check the books out of your library. You can certainly use Google Forms to create that checkout form and then they can use that same exact form to check it back in. And again, you will get that written time stamped log of where all of your classroom stuff is. Wouldn't that be nice? Nothing missing in your classroom. You'd know exactly who borrowed it and you'd have record of that to back it up. When it was checked out, who has it, all of that good stuff. Number eight is a help request form. If you are responsible for maintaining any technology or you're an aide that helps with copying papers or laminating or in charge of anything that people request you to do something, you can create a help request form. These are commonly known as tickets. For example, a tech department would have a link to a form that a teacher or student would fill out when they're having a computer problem. The ticket would ask for their name, explain the problem, and when a good time would be to meet to resolve the issue. This creates an easy way for the person to request help and it creates an organized list of tasks the technology department needs to complete. A pro tip on this one, as the requests come in and you complete them, highlight that row in a different color so you can easily see the new unhighlighted requests that need attention. Another pro tip, use the Get email notifications for new responses setting to receive an email each time someone completes the form. This way you do not need to constantly check the form. It will send you an email when there is a new response. We have just two more ways left to use Google Forms in the classroom. Number nine is a behavior log. Sometimes we need to track students' behavior and having a quick and easy way to do this is imperative, so we actually remember to do it. If you are doing this for your whole classroom, you can create a two-question form that asks for your student name and the behavior that was observed. If multiple teachers are tracking the same student, you're going to again create a two-question form that includes the teacher's name and the behavior observed. That form would be specifically created for one student, so you wouldn't need the student's name. Since everyone would be using the same form, the data will all be collected in on one spreadsheet, so you can see the power in that. The response sheet will automatically timestamp it, just like we already learned, and you will have a very organized data sheet on one student's behavior from multiple teachers. The last way to use Google Forms in the classroom, number 10, choose your own adventure. This one is so much fun. Inside of Google Forms, you can send the respondent to a different set of questions based on their responses. This is like those choose your own adventure books where everyone will start at question one and branch out from there, all ending with a different path most likely. You can also use these for ethical scenarios or yes, no paths where students make decisions. They're a little bit of work to set up, I will warn you, but kids love them and they can be used again and again where students go on a different path each time they use the same form. To set these types of forms up, use multiple choice questions and add sections as new paths. Then connect all the sections by clicking the three dots and selecting 
go to section based answer. Make the selections then for each answer. A pro tip on this one, expand on this activity by having students write about the decisions they made and how they affected the character or what happened when they selected each answer. There are so many ways to set these paths up, but including a journal prompt at the end or having them journal as they go is a great way to bring it all together. All right, that is it. All 10 ways you can implement Google Forms in the classroom. Doing a quick rundown of them again. Number one, survey. Two, formative assessment. Number three was an exit ticket. Four was a quiz or test. Number five, a picture assignment. Six was a sign-up sheet. Seven, a check-in form. Number eight, a help request. Nine, a behavior log. And 10, choose your own adventure. Those are 10 different ways you can up-level Google Forms in the classroom. Please like and subscribe if you have received value from this video and comment below with other ways you use Google Forms in the classroom. Thank you.